Microsoft 365 Copilot finally got released. However, unless you're in a really large organization, you probably don't have access to it. In this video, I'm going to go through how you can get access to the Copilot-like features without having to get Copilot in actuality for either free using existing stuff in PowerPoint or free applications, or if not free, then very, very, very cheap. My name is David, but I'm going to have tons of videos on PowerPoint, Excel, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams, Canva. If you're using Tech of the Workplace that I'm covering on my channel, so check out my other videos if you like this kind of content. All right, let's get going. So this is the Microsoft website on Copilot and PowerPoint, and it's got these different things. You can create a presentation for a prompt, summarize a presentation, organize it, and do other things like use branding from your organization as well, and a bunch of different things in here. But essentially, how this differs to something like ChatGBT is that this is more in context. So you are typing it on a sidebar here, what you want with your presentation, rather than ChatGBT, where you do need to copy in, into ChatGBT, paste outside, download, or something like that. Copilot is something that is in context. And this is how Microsoft feel it's going to deliver to organizations. A little bit like if you're in Google Docs and Google Docs is experimenting with Duet AI, where you have this thing that helps you write and you can write something directly in line, or you can select some text and you can also rephrase it, summarize it, bulletize it, etc. So here we are in PowerPoint and I have a presentation that I gave very recently about this kind of thing, how you can replicate Copilot. And one of the things is create an agenda for your slides. Now, a lot of people don't know this feature exists, but it's absolutely brilliant. If you click in between each slide like this, right before the first header, I can go to insert and I can choose zoom and summary zoom. This is how you create an agenda inside PowerPoint. This has been in since 2019. I'm gonna choose my six ones, which are headers. Note that what I did was I put the same formatting for each slide, and I'm going to press insert. PowerPoint will create sections and it will have this summary section. And this is a special thing called a zoom here, which if I go into slideshow mode, then as I click on each one, it takes me to that section. But I can click on any one of these. It doesn't have to be in a linear order. For example, I can go here and run through those slides. And when I'm done, it comes back to the agenda, which is really fantastic. Now you may be thinking, yes, but the point is that I can type it in and I don't need to know that it's called Zoom, which I agree is not a very useful name if we're calling it agenda in the Copilot promo videos. So we want to be able to do something where we type and get an output for that. So text to presentation, Copilot's advertising that as being a really cool thing that's coming up, but PowerPoint's had that built in for a while. You go to file and then new, you get this thing called quick start at start and outline. This will just give you an outline, but I could say history of British royal family. There you go. I can choose between which royal family in case I got it wrong. I'm going to go with British royal family. That's fine. These ones, click next. So it's giving me that theme and it's got the contents, which is kind of like an agenda, but not as good as the one that we just made. And then it's got just essentially blank slides over here, apart from these two hidden slides at the top. Uh, this is standard wording, and then the summary of what it's done the research for, and this is what it's found, and then some related topics to research. So it's an outline. It's very, very rudimentary, but there are other apps that are able to do even better. So one of the main things I'll show you in this presentation is Canva. What Canva has done with AI is absolutely spectacular. So we've gone through Google Docs, which is free. We're also going to look at Word Online and Microsoft Designer and Remove.bg. They're all free applications. We're going to look at ChatGPT and Canva, which both have a free tier or a paid tier. The ChatGPT 4 paid tier is $20 per user per month, and the Canva Pro paid tier is about $4.60 per user per month if you buy the annual package. And it's amazing what these apps can do and how they can replace a lot of what Copilot is currently able to do. So here I'm in Canva, and I'm going to go create a design, and I'm going to choose a presentation, 69. Then your search box is over here. And if you type something in here, it will try to generate a presentation. So I'm going to say history of British royal family since 1500. So here it's got the templates in all results. But here in Magic Design, it's actually got the one that's generated. 
So I've got different formats. I can go to see all. Let's do this one. And then I can apply all seven pages. Now this is already uh, got timelines and things like that in a style. It hasn't necessarily looked up photos for each one, but it is a drastic improvement on what we could do with Quick Starter. I do quite like this, um, and it is something that you can do. Now, PowerPoint's Copilot also says it can create just a slide from a prompt. With Canva, you can do that by just kind of typing in here. So I can say War of the Roses. There you go. So I'm going to click on this, and let's go an overview. And if I just want one slide, I can just add like that and add this new page. So yeah, so that's kind of how you can add one slide. It's not exactly the same as what you could do with Copilot's advertised, but it's pretty good. All right, so this stuff, I would say, is impressive when you show it in a demo video, but honestly, having had this feature in PowerPoint for years and having had it in Canva for about a year, this is just never something that I ever use because the way that I build presentations is completely different. I'm gonna show you some stuff that I think is way, way, way more useful than anything the Copilot can currently do in PowerPoint. Remove.bg allows you to take any photo like this and copy it, and then go here and paste it, Control V. You can also import it and drag it in and do various other ways to get it in. But look at that. How good is that that it's done the job? And then you can download it. And all this is free. And the best part about this is not just that it's free. It's that you don't even have to sign up. You can do this as an anonymous user. You'd have to log in. You'd have to create an account. It's completely free for you to do. And let's do something a little bit harder. Control C, Control V. Check that out. How good is that? That's got a little bit of grass there, but I guess it's kind of inevitable. But it does a pretty awesome job. You can also erase restore. So if I decide that actually I want to keep a little bit of it, it's not going to be as perfect, but I just need to do kind of some of it and then it will pick up. Hopefully that that's part of a wider thing. Yeah, there you go. So it's now picked out that that is actually a cow in its own right. So it's taken the legs, even though I didn't pick them. Then you can just download it like this. If you want to download HD, then you do have to pay for that. But honestly, download regular is totally fine the majority of the time. And this one, what about this one? This is a pretty hard one. Control C, Control V. Check that out. How good is that? How realistic is it? Now, a lot of people talk about image generation. You can get that for free from Bing AI and various other resources. So I can say, for example, elephant on roller skates in Jupiter's lakes. And there you go, it's done that, it's pretty good. So you could either download it here, you could also click customize and go to the free Microsoft designer and edit it. And then you've got this, it's got remove background, uh, generative erase as well, and some blurring stuff. And it is pretty fun, but I'd say it's about a fraction of what Canva's free version can do. So yeah, that's where I'd go with that. Although uh, the remove background feature, if you are already in this context, is pretty good as well. Now here I'm back in Canva, and it's all well and good to generate something from scratch, but people want more today. I feel like there are so many better use cases of using generative AI for images. For example, here, I have a photo of this cat, and his ear is cut off, and also he has no body, and the background isn't great. But what you can do now is you can click on Edit Photo, and you can choose Magic Span. I love this. So I'm going to go Freeform first. I'm going to expand like that. And then in this way, I'm going to make sure that it goes kind of like that. So we're going to build out his whole body. And let's go magic expand. And look at that. It's still the cat. I mean, sure, if you really looked at it, you would identify that that was made up. But if someone just showed you that, it's even giving him some cat friends. How cool is that? All right, so magic edit. So here, I started like this. And suddenly I said, that iPad, I want to change to a paper fan. These kind of pants trousers, I want them to replace with the skirt. And I want him to have a tie. So this is something called magic edit. Generative partial replacement. So I can click on that. I can choose magic edit. And this, by the way, is free. The other magic features of images in Canva are paid, but this one is free. So let's say that I want to replace this with something. I can just select it like that. And I can go to continue and describe what to edit a bouquet 
of flowers. Generate. There you go. Not half bad, eh? Particularly this one gives him an extra hand. <laughs> so here is a very, very busy photo. What I can do is I can do an eraser. So I can say that actually I don't want these traffic lights to be here. There you go. Done a pretty decent job. Not perfect. I can go a second round. Sometimes I'll do a second round as well. Another one I really love is this one. So go to edit photo. Here we have a picture with some text. You can say grab text. All right. And it's done a decent job there. So here's the output. And here is now that I can grab the text. And it tries to actually get the font, the, the slant, the angle, the color, the width, the size, all of that stuff and make it editable. So now I can just say much sun. Now I'm not going to say that this works all the time. And there you go. Now I made it lowercase, uh, but I could make it uppercase like that. But it's done a pretty decent job. So those are these image tools and keep an eye out because they are getting better. For example, a recent update was that now you can choose multiple on the same photo. It used to be they had to choose between one and lock that in. So I really like that you can use that as well. It's got a background remover as well. Canva also has a video background remover and it's kind of version of text to image. If you go to elements and then you generate your own. So Canva's version can actually generate videos as well as images. I wouldn't say they're really spectacular videos, but it can do that. So another thing the Copilot is boasting is the ability to convert a Word document to a presentation. But that's actually inside Microsoft Word online at the moment. It's been there for about two years. If you go to file and then you go to export, you can choose export to PowerPoint presentation preview, only available in Word on the web, but this does exist and has done for a while. I'm going to do exports. As you can see, it says text is included, but tables and images are coming soon. They've been coming soon for a while, so I guess Copilot kind of got in the way of that. So there you go. It actually looked up images relevant to it and exported it. Of course, you would say that it put way too much text in it. So yeah, it's actually done that instead of generating speaker notes, it's just put the text there, which is not what you want in a presentation. The Copilot version can definitely do a lot better than that. And so can Canva. So here I have the same document and you have Canva Docs, similar to you have Canva Presentations. Uh, then you can go Convert and then you can say Get Started. It kind of knows where your brand is. So I'm going to go with that one and create my presentation. Let's start it into sections and split it out. Uh, it's also not the most adequate to it, but it has just put that in the presentations as you wish based on your outline. If I didn't choose one of my brands, it would have done a slightly more visual version, kind of like that, but still is very, very wordy. I personally don't love Canvas presentation templates. It puts too much emphasis on keeping them consistent, and that's not how I prepare presentations. I just have full screen images all the time, which is why I love Magic Expand. Um, so the other way around, though, is also something that is worth looking at. So here I have a presentation on the history of calendars as well, same as the Word doc. And what I can do is I can go to Magic Switch. Magic Switch is pretty awesome. You have a bunch of different things here. For example, you have Transform to Doc, and I'm going to do all text, Transform into Doc. And by the way, you can download this through the Share button as a PowerPoint file after you've done it. Unfortunately, you can with Docs, though. You cannot download them as... Uh, Word docs at the moment. I'm sure that's something that's in development though. Aha, uh -huh, and here we are, open doc. Yeah, and it's listed out everything kind of like that. And you can also do, as we saw, you can have an email. So I can say something like, here is a summary of what is in the slides. That can be pretty useful. Or something silly like song lyrics, you can also say that. Let's try that. There we go, open doc. <laughs> Moon, moon, month, lunar, lunatic, menstrual, rhythmic, so cryptic. Wow. Okay. Well done. Well done, guys. Uh, interesting. But what is also really cool is the other stuff in Magic Switch. I mean, this is resized. So if you want to have this not as a 69, but a completely other type of dimension, that is really, really good. It does much better than PowerPoint does. I wouldn't say that's AI, though. But translate this is really cool 
So I can say translate into Khmer, and let's do all 10 pages, or I can just select the ones that I want, like these ones, done, translate. That was really fast. And not only does it actually just do the translation, but it also is smart enough to resize things as need be to make sure they fit in the context of images, which is really nice. That is a really, really cool feature that PowerPoint just does not have and is probably not particularly close to having, I would say, either. So whilst you're in this, another one, this one you can do with PowerPoint Copilot. So if you have a slide, you can go to Animate and you've got Magic Animate. Also, it's got the crown, so it's a pro feature. Let's go to the recommended style and it uses a series of different animations, which if you did this manually in PowerPoint would be take you absolutely ages, but here it works quite well um, and you can choose between which one you like. So back to this list here of Copilot and PowerPoint and this one, use your organization's branding with Copilot. This one is something that I believe is not yet fully released in PowerPoint yet, but will be soon. Um, but Canva is just so much ahead of PowerPoint in terms of having your brand stuff. So you can have your brand assets with your logos and with any photos that are related to your brand, all that kind of stuff with your fonts and your colors, et cetera, et cetera. And you can also have something that's called your brand voice, which is really, really cool. So what you can do is you can select some text and you can go to magic write or do it through the plus button there. And you can choose something like rewrite, summarize, expand text is often there as well. But I'm gonna choose this one, apply brand voice. There you go, the modern calendar is a fascinating tool. So you can say what your brand voice is, i.e. who your target demographic is, whether you're more playful or serious or uh, brief, something like that. You can record that in the brand part and then it will apply a brand voice to something. So we can't talk about this kind of stuff without looking at ChatGPT. And if you have GPT-4, which is $20 per month, then you can upload documents. I think for me, that's the really, really big difference with GPT-4. So you can say, summarize this presentation. And there it's done it. It's done a summary of the presentation, which is pretty okay. You can also say, generate speaker notes for slide two. These are all things that Copilot can do, but it's definitely not in context. So this is what it's generated if I put them side by side. It's kind of said, introduction, hello, I'm David Benheim. And it's known that from the previous slide where I have my name and I am a chartered accountant by profession, blah, blah, blah. So it's generated speaker notes for that, but it's not in line. It's not put it in the notes box here. And definitely the next one, which is make slide less wordy. If you have a very wordy slide, that ChatGPT won't really be able to help you with because that's completely in context. So there definitely are some things that ChatGPT and all of the other tools cannot do in context at the moment, but it's really kind of getting there. So the things I've seen examples of can be done with this free ChatGPT or Bing AI chat, which is you could say, for example, uh, what is a good font size for a presentation, 24 to 32. I usually tell people uh, go with minimum of 30 because 30 is somewhere in that range. And also it means that people in the back of the room might not be able to read. Anyway, you can look up these things. Uh, I just showed that because I've seen a demo of that and I wanna make sure that I have completion of everything that I've seen demos of that it can do. Um, all right, so I hope you've enjoyed that. My name is David Van Eyman. Check out my other videos and content. I'm planning to do some more things on Copilot alternatives. So if you give this video a like, and if you write a comment, then that'll encourage me to do more of this stuff. Thanks for watching.